The Manifestation of the Sons of God, Chapter 34, Is Your Reality an Illusion? Our perception of reality is created through what we see, feel, hear, touch, or smell. It is greatly influenced by the culture we are raised in, along with the relationships and associations that we have. It is over a lifetime of experience through these modes of perception that our lens of reality is created, or what I would call our personal paradigm. All of these avenues of input mold, form, and shape our views of reality and our belief system, what we believe is possible and what we believe is not possible. The saying goes, we are what we eat. Perhaps you've heard that. On a deeper level of consciousness, this is even more true, for we are what we partake of on every level. We become a physical expression of what we have accepted and assimilated. This explains why there can be such a divergence of perceptions between cultures, good or bad, possible or impossible. Your perceptions are framed by the input that you have had as you have grown within this world system. This does not make it true or valid. These values are just one more bit of the baggage that we pick up in this sojourn. We have said before that we actually learn unbelief. This is very true for the programming or indoctrination that we go through in this world system literally shapes our belief system. We actually learn unbelief. If your path has taken you through the church world and you have a set of belief systems that are a unique challenge to you. If you've been in some other religion, the same applies. And you will have to unlearn the restrictive conditioning that you have assimilated if you are to move on into the deep things of God. To the Eastern mystic, the realm of spirit may seem commonplace, yet to the Western mind, the realm of spirit may be perceived as being non-existent. The problem that each one faces is the inherent perception or belief system that must be unlearned. This has been one of the paramount challenges that God's sons have faced as they have been sojourning out of this world into the day of the kingdom, out of the day of the church age into the day of the kingdom, is to unlearn the limitations and restrictions that they have assimilated in their sojourn so far. Do you understand what I'm saying? No one is void this challenge. Everyone faces this challenge to a degree. Do you remember Smith Wigglesworth? He was a man of great faith. He lived in the uh, 1940s and earlier, uh, the early part of the 20th century. Smith was uneducated. He couldn't even read. Yet the Spirit taught him how to read, and he only read the Word of God, nothing else. Whether or not he understood the dynamics of what he was doing, he had determined that the only truth or input that he would receive would be from the Lord by virtue of the Word of God. Smith was determined that he would not allow any input into his heart but the truth of God's Word. And signs followed Smith Wigglesworth as he walked before the Lord, for he was known to have raised the dead and performed many other miraculous works. His perception of reality was not tainted by the sterility of the culture he lived in. His paradigm of reality was deeply rooted in the Word. Paul speaks in the book of Romans about the renewing of the mind, Romans 12, and do not be conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what the will of God is, and that which is good and acceptable and perfect. More than we understand, 
to a degree we have all been conformed to this world. Yet in the process of the cross and the renewing of the mind, we are stepping out of the confirmation that we have lived under. As you continue to experience the renewing of your mind, a number of dynamics begin to change within you. And it's, this is a very interesting topic because change in God so often happens very slow. It's almost imperceptible, especially to yourself, because you live with yourself. And so day in, day out, there might be changes, but you really don't notice it. But someone who may have not been around you for a while could then come and see how much you've changed. And then you could look back and say, yes, I've changed quite a bit. The renewing of the mind is ever so subtle. And we're challenged to stay up with recognizing what God has done within us and not be the point of restraint. As these dynamics begin to change within you, you begin to hear and see on levels that you were unable to perceive before. The Word begins to come alive to you in new ways. Whole new vistas of perception unfold literally right before your eyes. Because you've been, you're coming into the mind of Christ and you're beginning to discern the truth. And progressively as you discern the truth, the truth begins to set you free. Over the years, we've had different ones come to us in the Spirit to deliver a message. And the message that came numerous times was that what we sought was already here. In fact, it was right in front of us. But there was always a caveat. We needed to see through the eyes of the Lord to be able to discern this. And how do you do that? Only through the progressive renewing of the mind, of your mind. It's hard to grasp, I understand, or visualize. But every day as you go deeper into the, this path of sonship and you go through the deeper work of the cross, you must understand that your mind is changing. Your ability to comprehend the truth, to understand the truth, is changing. And that is progressively setting you apart further and further from mainstream Christianity, much less humanity. And all of a sudden, that which becomes very um, commonplace for you is way outside the box for most everyone else. Visions and appearings come, and they continue to goad God's sons. And they have goaded us as we have sought to understand just what is the Lord speaking of that we need to see through his eyes. And why couldn't we see it? It's right here. Why couldn't we see it? When the, first, when the word first came, we didn't quite understand that the Lord was saying, it'll come to you in the process of the renewing of the mind. We just kept thinking, well, why don't I have it right here, right now? But it was something that was gradually coming and would continue to gradually come to the sons as they go through the deep preparation for sonship. The cloud of witnesses have expressed something very similar. They, they say, well, why don't you see it? Why don't you realize who you are? It's right here in front of you. If you took one step to the left, one step to the right, you would bump right into it. But we couldn't see it. Those were, that was, this came many years ago as we began to walk on this accelerated path. A lot of water has gone under the bridge, so to speak, before we began to understand why we couldn't see 
because we were in the process, the process of the renewing of the mind on a level that had not yet been completed. I may have been able to see many things, but I could not grasp what they were telling me. I still wasn't seeing, not on that level. This is the path the sons are walking through. What a learning curve. Until I realize that we're experiencing an ongoing renewing of the mind, and that renewing is changing our capacity to see. And now I understood. Our capacity to see is in a constant state of flux. What we were not able to perceive or understand yesterday is giving way as this process hastens to fulfillment. That's why you have to continue to break bonds with yourself. Because how you saw reality and everything a month ago is not how you see it now. That's how quickly it's changing and how careful we have to be not to lock ourselves into, well, that's how I saw it. That may have been how you saw it, but not today. If you come before the Lord open, without conditioning or preconception, you will find all of a sudden that you're able to see further than you saw before. It's like being on top of a mountain and looking out at the great vista before you. And you can see mountain ranges and you can see hills and trees. And yet, the next day you come back to it, maybe you have a new set of glasses on and you look out and you can see the vista and you can see mountain ranges that were further beyond what you saw before. So much more coming into clarity that you now see that you couldn't have seen, you know, just the day before. That's what this experience of the renewing of the mind is. Because what's happening is you're changing moment by moment, day by day. The sons of God are not static. They're not just sitting here going through the motions, treading water, riding a bicycle, and going nowhere. No. The sons of God are in a constant state of flux and change. And what you saw yesterday is not as great as your capacity to see today. That's why you can come up to someone and, and, you, and, and you can see, well, gosh, six months ago, they didn't understand. They didn't see it. And now all of a sudden, they can see it. They can understand. They can grasp. Because the renewing of the mind has gone deep enough that it's opened up the portals within their mind to understand and comprehend. And you might think, well, six months ago, I was scratching my head. I don't understand why they couldn't see. I can see. Why couldn't they? Because the process had not gone deep enough. So week by week, day by day, your capacities are unfolding and changing, and this will accelerate as this timeline continues. This should explain just a bit of the difficulty that you may have had. To understand this experience of the renewing of your mind sheds further light on the difficulty that we face as we speak to others. Unless the renewing of the mind is far enough along, unless the Holy Spirit has brought the work of change deep enough, you could talk all day long, and no one will understand what you're talking about. And they may say, well, I understand. And they do on a mental level. But they really are clueless. You are literally experiencing a rewiring of your mind, and this is changing everything for you. Perhaps you're beginning to grasp the power and the intent of the Father behind Romans 12 too. It's nothing to take lightly, for this renewing of the mind is the pivotal point at which everything changes. One of the greatest struggles you face is recognizing just how much you have changed. There's no measuring barometer that will tell you the percentages, but you will know. Men will cease to be as trees walking, 
Mark 8. It is gradual, but like a constant drip of the water. The work of the renewing of the mind is in a constant state of change within you. One of the effects of this change or rewiring within you is that your understanding of reality makes a huge shift. We have seen, as the scriptures speak, through a glass darkly. In our greatest moments of clarity, we still have not seen clearly. But we're talking about something more than just a gift of perception or revelation. We're talking about a renewing at the core of our entire being. The veil is coming off the sons of God. It has been a veil that has existed because of the carnal mind we have lived with. We have not been able to see and grasp what has literally been in our midst. We have said before that Christ rent the veil. So the veil does not exist, yet until we experience a deeper level of the renewing of the mind, we are still veiled in our understanding. The cry which comes from the Spirit in this day is, Come out of her, my people. God is delivering his sons from Babylon on every level. The deliverance is going deeper and deeper within the framework of how we have thought and how we have perceived. We've addressed this issue before, but we want to take another look at it from one more vantage point. There's another plane of deliverance that should be considered as a deeper fulfillment, a deliverance from a dimension that we have known since birth, from the dimension of this world in which we have lived and perceived as reality. The scriptures state that we have been delivered from the domain of Satan into the domain of God's beloved Son, Colossians 1. However, there has remained a great deal of that scripture which needs to be appropriated for we've only known a measure of that reality. We believe that we are in the world, but not of it. Yes, that is the word. But there is a transformation, a deliverance of Romans 8 and Romans 12 that must be experienced for this reality to be realized. When it comes to a level of experience and knowing, this scripture has not yet seen its fulfillment within a people. As God continues to bring you through this process of renewal, the demand comes from the Spirit to let go. Let go of that which you have known, of that which you have learned. This renewing of the mind does not happen overnight, nor does it happen within your diligent drive to let go of your past perceptions. The first step in learning to see involves the learning, the unlearning of what your lifetime experience has taught you to perceive. I would question everything that you see, everything your emotions dictate to you, everything your senses want to tell you. Question everything and let the Lord reveal to you what is real and what is not. You can speak the very same word to a dozen different people and you will find a, different, a dozen different interpretations of what was conveyed. Why is that? because each person exists within their own framework of reality, molded by their experience, and therefore you'll come up with a dozen different perceptions. In some ways, you could say that you've literally been brainwashed into believing by what you have received from your senses. There's a great deal of conditioning that must be set aside if you're to perceive the truth, and in perceiving the truth, to change.